Have you ever seen a pair of siblings who looked really similar, but one was taller than the other? Or a pair of twins that were identical down to the size of their ears? In this lesson, we're going to learn about similar and congruent triangles and apply that knowledge to some ACT problems. Think of similar triangles like those look-alike siblings and congruent triangles like identical twins. Let's get a little bit more specific. Similar triangles both have the exact same angle measures. Notice that these two triangles both have angles A, B, and C. One triangle is just a bigger version of the other. If two triangles are similar, then the ratio of the corresponding sides stays the same for all three sides. An easy formula to use for similar triangle problems is little over big equals little over big. We call this ratio the scale factor, and it stays the same for all of the corresponding sides. We can see that the side measuring 2 and its corresponding side measuring 4 are in the little to big ratio of 2 to 4. This ratio is the scale factor, and we can reduce it to 1 to 2. Using this ratio, we can now solve for x on the side of the big triangle that corresponds to the side measuring 5 on the small triangle. Using the formula little over big equals little over big, we get 2 over 4 equals 5 over x. If we cross multiply 4 times 5 and 2 times x, we get 2x equals 20. Dividing each side by 2, we get x equals 10. When we're working with two similar triangles with sides in the same ratio, keep in mind that the perimeters are also in the same ratio. So let's find the perimeter of the little triangle by adding 2 plus 7 plus 5 to get 14. We can find the perimeter of the large triangle without finding the measure of each side length by using the formula little over big equals little over big. Again, we use the corresponding sides of 2 and 4 to find the ratio of little to big and then set that equal to the little perimeter, 14, over the big perimeter, which we can call y. Cross multiplying, we get 2y equals 56. Dividing each side by 2, we get y equals 28. So if the little triangle's perimeter is 14, the big triangle's perimeter is 28. Now that we have mastered finding the perimeter, let's talk about congruent triangles. First of all, congruent means equal. So congruent triangles have exactly the same three sides and exactly the same three angles. Congruent triangles are like similar triangles because both triangles have the same angles. However, since they're exactly the same, they also have the same side lengths. When triangles are congruent and one triangle is placed on top of the other, the sides and angles that are in the same positions are called corresponding parts. There are four theorems that prove congruence. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. There's also a fifth theorem that only works for right triangles, hypotenuse leg. That was the name of my band in high school but that's a story for another time. First, let's look at side, side, side. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, we know the two triangles are congruent. Next, we have side, angle, side. This means that if two sides of one triangle and the angle formed by the sides being used are congruent to the corresponding parts of another triangle, the triangles are congruent. Now, let's look at angle, side, angle. If two angles and the included side, where the rays of the angles would overlap, of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of another triangle, the triangles are congruent. Then we have angle, angle, side, which can also be written side, angle, angle. This theorem states that if two angles and the non-included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Finally, we have a theorem that only works for right triangles. It's called, drum roll please, hypotenuse leg. If the hypotenuse and leg of one right triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of another right triangle, then the right triangles are congruent. All of these theorems prove congruence except angle, 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 which if you remember from earlier, simply proves that the triangles are similar but not necessarily congruent. Hypotenuse leg also doesn't prove congruence in all triangles, since it only works for right triangles. Now, let's apply these theorems to an ACT problem. This one involves proving triangle congruence. In the figure below, CE equals ED and AE equals EB. Angle ACE measures 70 degrees and angle EBD measures 50. 
What is the measure of angle E, D, B? F is 40 degrees, G is 50 degrees, H is 60 degrees, J is 70 degrees, and K is cannot be determined from the given information. Let's start by putting the information given in the problem into the drawing. CE equals ED. Let's mark that with two lines. AE equals EB. We'll mark them with one line. Now we'll write in that angle ACE measures 70 degrees and angle EBD measures 50 degrees. Also, we can mark that angle CEA equals angle BED because they're opposite angles. Now we can see a side angle side congruence. If you continue around the triangle in the direction of congruence, angle C must equal angle D, which means that angle D measures 70 degrees. Choice J is the correct answer. Now all you have to do is reward yourself with a treat. Similar and congruent, two great words that don't mean the same thing. Now that you know the difference and how to classify similar triangles and congruent triangles, you're one step closer to having your score on the ACT be congruent with your goal.